Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode. Um, today I'm going to be talking about nutrition and metabolism. So I'm going to go through it in short, I'm not going to go too detailed. So I'm going to go over the basics, what we need, why we need it, what it does in our bodies. So stick around till the end, uh, you might get some benefit from this. I think you definitely would get benefit from this video and it will, sh will show you why you need to eat and why you need to eat nutrients. Why you need to focus on what you are eating so that you are getting in <coughs> the right nutrients in the right amounts of time. Right amounts of time, <laughs> right amounts of, right amounts. So um, without any further ado, let's get into it. So nutrition and metabolism. So with breathing, you can survive for maybe five or 10 minutes without breathing. Without water, you can survive a few days. Without sunlight, you can survive quite a long time. Without food, you can go, it depends <laughs> on your body type and how you look, but about 20 days um, to maybe 40 days max. So it depends on, on um, your body type, how much stores you have, what you have in your body. So let's start. So the basic things, you have macronutrients and you have micronutrients. So macro means big, so big nutrients. Micro means small, so small nutrients. So I think everyone did uh, had science at school and you had the periodic table. So all of those elements on the periodic table you need in your body in different amounts. Yes, some of them are poisonous and some of them can kill you, but even tiny trace amounts, they are essential in your body. Even arsenic, arsenic is essential to your body. You need trace tiny amounts of it in your body to function. So all of those little things in the, in the um, periodic table you need, and your body works on charge, positives and negative. That's how a lot of molecules move about in your body, how they, they, how they cross, how they go from out of your blood into your blood, from one cell to another cell, in, inside your cell, intracellular to extracellular. That's how they move. You have proton pumps, electron pumps that move molecules and move things around your body. So positive and negative charges are also really important pH is important. You have an intracellular pH, you have an extracellular pH, you have a blood pH. If your blood pH changes, you die. Intracellular and extracellular pH can differ a little bit. Inside your cell, the pH can vary a lot. An alkaline environment inside of your cell is good. A, a acidic environment, so more negative charge, means you will have more disease and more difficulties so those are some things to to note so we need nutrients to survive so your macronutrients are your protein your carbohydrate and your fats those you need every single day to give you energy mostly so fats we use as energy we use as insulation you use it for its protective function as well and for growth and reproduction. So it sits in your, your cell membrane to protect your cell. You also get your um, monounsaturated fats, your polyunsaturated fats, which is linked to the how long and how intricate the string of, of fats are. Then you get triglycerides, which means it's three glycerides bound together. They are important for hormonal synthesis as well, your fats. So your fats have a specific function. Your fats also are essential to absorb and to store your fat-soluble vitamins, which are essential. So I'll get to the essential and non-essential ones a little bit later. Your body can produce things, but it needs something to go in as well. So we don't eat fat, carbohydrate, protein. We eat food. We eat an apple. You eat a carrot. You eat a stew. 
you eat a pizza so you're not necessarily looking at i'm eating fat carbohydrates and protein uh, so you just need to to look out for the things that you put onto your food and the things that you add together so i always advocate a whole food plant-based lifestyle to add in as much fresh and whole produce as you can because they are the most nutrient dense fruit vegetables nuts seeds legumes beans sprouts microgreens they contain whole grains they contain the most variety and the most nutrient packed and dense foods that you can get animal products do have nutrients but they are not as nutrient dense so if you look gram for gram a plant-based product will have more nutrients more variety and in higher amounts than your animal product uh, so in different places you might need to do different things i'm not totally against eating meat or adding dairy or eggs but it depends on your situation it depends where you get it from it depends uh, the source the health of the animal so many things depend so fats you need you need fat so you cannot cut fat out of your diet you need fat and you need carbohydrates so carbohydrates give you fiber give you it's your main energy source your main source of glucose which your body runs on your body runs on glucose that's its fuel that's what it uses that's the energy that it uses oh, excuse me <laughs> the jacket that i chose to wear today has some microfibers that give me very bad hay fever so i should actually donate this jacket uh, it is one that I like, <laughs> but it gives me terrible hay fever. It has microfibers that irritate my nose and my throat. So we need fat, we need carbohydrates, and we need protein. So protein we need for cellular repair, cellular function. You need it for the structure in your body. You need it as a backup energy source as well, and to have your hormone and enzyme production. So those three you need. They are go into your body and they're absorbed in different ways they take different amounts of time to be absorbed and how they are structured depends how easily or how difficult it is to digest them animal products are very hard to digest it takes a very long time plant-based products take much less time to digest so animal products take six hours or more to digest generally um, plant-based ones are less than three hours so those are also some of the things that you need to look out for so you need indigestible fiber as well from the carbohydrates. So you get soluble fiber, which can dissolve in water, which is also very good for you. And you get insoluble, which is like a stem of a plant, which you cannot, you can absorb nutrients from it, but you can't digest everything. So it will come out again. So you need those to promote your gut motility, your bacterial growth and your gut microflora growth. So you need it to grow your bacteria. We are like, bacteria uh, a bacteria factory we have bacteria all over our bodies if you do not have bacteria you will die you need bacteria all over it eats all of the bad things it eats um, things that we don't need and it helps produce a lot of things that we need as well it produces vitamin k it produces b12 if you have the right bacteria it produces biotin so these bacteria are essential in our bodies they produce things for us <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> so talking about carbohydrates, you have different kinds of carbohydrates. Now, in our modern lives, we have a lot of products that come from a shelf. So there's something called the GI, the glycemic index, which shows you how much your glucose, blood glucose will change if you eat that product. So white bread will make your blood glucose go very high very quickly. Uh, something like brown rice or uh, whole wheat bread will have a more um, even effect on your blood glucose and it won't go just up and down so if you have a spike you have lots of energy suddenly and then it drops below and you feel you're so tired you want to sleep you have no energy so you want a moderate curve in your glycemic index so a low one means it doesn't have a big effect on your glucose a high gi means it has a profound effect on your blood glucose so generally more fiber less of a spike in your blood glucose more even effect 
so a more slow release of the glucose if you have more fiber in your food. Whole foods have more fiber, so it's a more of a slow release to your glucose and your nutrients can be absorbed more efficiently and effectively as well. So those are the macronutrients. So micronutrients are the smaller ones, the trace elements that we need. So those are all the vitamins, all the minerals, and the, as I said, all of the things on the periodic table that we need in smaller and differing amounts to get the positive and negative charges. So trace minerals, like your B vitamins, are water soluble, meaning they go out in your urine, so you need them daily. So uh, water soluble vitamins and minerals you need to take in every day because they dissolve in water and they'll go out in your urine. So all the B vitamins, B1, thiamine, B2, riboflavin, B3, niacin, B5, pentothenic acid, B6, peroxidine, B10, biotin, B7, folic acid, B12, cobalamin, and there are some other ones as well. <laughs> But you need these. They are coenzymes, they help with metabolism and transport, and they are water soluble so they are not stored in your body. Then you get your vitamins. Vitamin C is water soluble. Vitamin A, D, E, and K are fat soluble, so they can be stored in your body. So that's where fat comes in. You need fat to absorb these A, D, E, K, vitamins A, D, E, K, and they are essential for your bodily function. I will bring out some videos about each one of them in the near future, so look out for those, vitamins A, D, E, and K. I will talk about them a little more in some videos that will be coming. Then I've made a video about essential amino acids, which are part of proteins. So you have 20 amino acids, nine of them are essential. There are seven conditionally essential ones. If you want more information, check out the video on amino acids. So we measure energy, in calories so it's just one gram of this food takes so much water to heat by one degree so it's an arbitrary measure of kind of energy locked in this food so generally one calorie is 4.2 kilojoules one kilojoule is 0 0.2 calories so you either use a calorie or a kilojoule so kilojoules are just the energy contained in food and it's the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature by one degree so that is the things that we need so there are some other things that we need as well we need sunlight we need water we need fresh air as i mentioned before so there are other things that we need to survive but generally the things that we need to eat you have essential and non-essential carbohydrates proteins fats they have different ways in which they work, different needs in our bodies, they're absorbed differently as well. So proteins, when you eat something that has protein in it, gets broken down to amino acids, which then travel to your liver, to your portal vein, where your liver will make them into individual amino acids and send them into your body, where they will be made into chains in your cells, in your cell membranes, where it, they can be put together and they can make strings which become proteins, hormones, they become cells, they muscles, they do all kinds of different things when different amino acids are put together. Amino acids can also enter your, your cells powerhouse into the, the glucose cycle where amino acids can also be used as fuel. <sighs> then your carbohydrates, when you eat carbohydrates, it also goes to your stomach, it gets digested, broken up, it gets broken into glucose, which is also sent to the liver. And if you need to store it, it's stored as glycogen in your muscle and your liver and different other parts in differing amounts. Glucose changes to pyruvate and this makes ATP. ATP is the energy molecule that your cells run on. ATP is what you need for energy. That is what travels everywhere and that's what gives you energy. That's what makes muscles contract. That's what makes neurons fire. ATP is what you need. So in the Krebs cycle is where glucose or pyruvate enters. The glucose becomes pyruvate. Pyruvate becomes acetyl-CoA. This enters the Krebs cycle and it will make ATP and it will make carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide, you'll, you'll um, exhale out. Your ATP is your energy molecule, uh, adenotriphosphate, and you will use that in your body as fuel. Then it also, a byproduct is hydrogen. 
which will enter the membrane of your mitochondria. It will bind with O2, oxygen, make water, and ATP will come out as well in the protein membranes. So it's called oxidative phosphorylation. So that's also where electron transport is very important. And oxygen is a rate limiting step of the Krebs cycle. So if you don't have oxygen, you are not making enough energy. Okay? So it's an aerobic process. So more oxygen, you can make more ATP, more energy. If you do not have, pyruvate goes to lactic acid. Lactic acid can be made into ATP or energy. So when you are doing anaerobic exercise, exercise without oxygen, then you will make lactic acid. You'll make ATP from the lactic acid, but if the lactic acid builds up, you can get cramping. So um, that is why we need glucose to make ATP, <laughs> to make energy. Then how, what happens to fats when it comes into your body? The fat can go directly into your systemic circulation or your bloodstream. That's why we don't need to eat so much why you need to eat certain kinds of fat because it can go directly into the bloodstream and to lymphatic circulation bypassing the liver. But it can also go into the liver, become triglycerides, and the glycerols can then enter the Krebs cycle and also be used for fuel, for energy, fatty acids. But if the fatty acids enter, there's something that will build up. Acetyl-CoA will build up and that will cause ketones to be made. And from ketones, you can also make ATP, but that will produce less ATP than glucose. So generally, you can produce 32 to 36 ATP molecules from glucose. So that's quite a lot of energy from a glucose molecule. So generally speaking, the more you eat, the more energy you can make, but then you have to use that energy. That's where the whole idea of what you put in, you have to use. If you don't use it, it gets stored and then you gain fat and you get bigger and bigger. That's where the whole premise starts. So no glucose, more acetyl-CoA, which can become glucose again. Pyruvate can also become glucose again, but you will have a buildup of oxaloacetate, which can also become glucose and that will all give you energy. Okay, so protein, carbohydrates, fats, they are absorbed in different ways. They work differently in your body. You need them for different things. They can all become energy ATP molecules, but the one that is specifically made to do that is carbohydrates, glucose. Your fats are not originally designed or made to become energy. Protein is not designed or made to become energy. It's made to become amino acids. Fat is made to become triglycerides and glycerol and do different things. So I hope this has been helpful to you. It has made things a little simpler so that you can see how things work in your body. So going from a big molecule to a small molecule, some of the essential things that we need, some of the less essential ones, but that we still need. So why you need to eat, what you need to eat, um, I will go into more detail about certain vitamins and minerals and more different videos. And um, I will tell you a bit more about food as well. So if you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, join. If you become a member, you can uh, have consultations with me if you join the Mango tier. So just check out those three tiers that I have. Uh, just only at the moment, it's only the mango one that provides you with, with consultation or that you can communicate with me directly. So, as always, stay healthy and to God be the glory.